Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got? Fat from food? Nah. Climate alarmism ringing the bell and pride equals sin. Hmm? <laughs> We're here with the big SIG TIG. Let's dive right in. People are shooting off about ultra processed foods. The US government comes out and says, you know what? It's not bad for you. Everything's been biased and it's totally fine. It's absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. Ultra processed foods are going to keep you alive. So ultra processed foods are UPF demonized for years for their supposed effect on our waistlines do not actually make people fat. According to a bombshell report, U.S. government's top dietitians found limited evidence these food cause people to gain weight faster than any other food. After reviewing more than a dozen studies dating back to the 1990s, the report has not been released in full and only segments have been uploaded to the internet. Well, the snippets suggest there's nothing intrinsic about processed food that causes obesity and that the amount of calories one eats is the most important factor for weight gain. Yeah, okay. People have been hearing a lot about the health risks of ultra-processed foods recently, which might make this report really surprising, Carolyn Williams, a registered dietitian who was not involved in the review, told DailyMail.com. So they say the unhealthiest ultra-processed foods contain additives like calcium propanate, which keep the foods from spoiling but increase insulin re resistance and diabetes risk, sweetened with high fructose corn syrup, which have been linked to obesity, diabetes, and liver disease, Contains corn starch, which has been shown to increase blood sugar. High in saturated fats and refined grains, which are not filling and can lead to overeating. And there's a number of different products there containing these things. Coloring comes from dyes like yellow 5 and yellow 6, which have been linked to hyperactivity in kids. Filled with nitrates, which have been shown to cause certain cancers like breast and prostate. Held together with emulsifiers, which research suggest could cause inflammation and irritation in the body. Well, all of these studies are incorrect, uh, com considering the government has come out with a report. Uh, the U.S. Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee, whose findings inform nutrition labels and public health recommendations for food. What they're saying is not that there is no relationship between ultra-processed foods and larger body size or greater body fat. They're saying right now, we don't have enough conclusive research to come out and say, avoid all of them. Uh, yeah, so the report comes from 20, from a group of 20 nutrition experts from across the country that are elected by the Department of Health and Human Services and U.S. Department of Agriculture to draft new national nutrition recommendations. So we are to listen to the government, obey, and never challenge the narrative. Uh, and if you were to go with like, uh, let's say Harvard, for instance, they've come out uh, recently and s stated that, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of bad things about ultra processed foods. And what do they do to your body? They cause spots. Studies suggest high sugar and fat content in UPFs cause a spike in hormones that leads to increased production of an oily substance in our skin called sebum. This can clog pores, uh, creating spots or acne zits, greasy hair, high sugar and fat content causes the body to increase the amount of oil produced from glands and hair follicles in the scalp, potentially leading to greasy hair. Experts theorize that ultra processed foods disrupt the gut's microbiome, microbiome uh, having a knock on effect on the production of serotonin, a chemical used by the brain that helps regulate mood. Ultra processed foods can also lead to obesity, a risk factor for depression comes as Harvard University researchers found people who eat more UPFs have a marginally increased risk of an early death. Experts based their findings on a study of 115,000 healthy U.S. adults who had their health and diet monitored for 30 years. So this should be the study that the U.S. is looking for uh, to verify theirs because it seems like their dietitians are completely wrong. The 32 damaging health outcomes linked to UPF. All right, so they have a credibility rating and a grade. Mortality, all-cause mortality is suggestive and um, highly suggestive, whatever. 
Anyway, so these are a bunch of things here that are coming out. Mental health, adverse sleep-related outcomes, anxiety, combined common mental disorders outcomes, depression, asthma, wheezing for your respiratory health, cardiovascular disease, morbidity and mortality, cardiovascular disease, morbidity, hypertension, hypertriglyceridemia, low, high-density lipoprotein cholesterol levels, cancers, you got breast Cancer overall, central nervous system tumors, chronic lympho lymphocytic leukemia, collectoral cancer, pancreatic cancer, prostate cancer, gastrointestinal health, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis. So, uh, yeah, there is a legend here. This isn't stating that all of these things are caused by it. There is some links and causality, potentially. But I think you all know... All the Sig Tigs know that this stuff is absolute trash. As delicious as it is, you know deep down inside there's a guilty feeling when you're consuming all of this trash. I mean, when you eat a fruit or a vegetable, you know, you feel good. You eat a salad, you have a feeling of overall goodness. You eat McDonald's and you have an overall feeling of sickness. It's pretty simple. All right, moving right along, Terry Glavin. Canada slowly acknowledging there was never a mass grave. Yeah. Didn't a couple years ago they came out, rah, rah, you know, Kamloops, all the uh, Catholics were killing babies during the residential schools. It was like the worst thing ever. How could we have allowed this to happen? Well, guess what? We're going to pump like a billion dollars into this and we're going to find out what's going on. We're going to create a new holiday in September. Uh, let's recognize the indigenous. And hey, listen, they should be recognized. What happened to them is, is absolutely horrid. Uh, atrocities all over. But uh, there was no mass graves. There's not been one body found. Not two, three, four, five, like in one grave. Nothing. No bodies. So, like, you know, shouldn't they come out and say, like, we're sorry that we put this on to the residential schools. You know, they had a bad rap. It's obviously worse now. You know, multi-billion dollar Indian residential school settlement agreement for the conservatives. And then you had the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. They came out, and I read it. The report is horrific. So roughly 150,000 children are believed to have attended the schools, which the federal government took over in the 1890s. Most indigenous kids were attending day schools by the 1970s, but the last of the schools didn't close their doors until 1996. Yikes. So anyway, the, the story was that there was a whole bunch of dead bodies. Kids were being so mistreated. Uh, they were just dying of malnutrition and beatings and all kinds of stuff. So what were the, these people to do? Just bury them on the site. No big deal. But it's all false. It's all fake. It was a lie. It was a politically motivated lie. All right. Scientists say an apocalyptic bird flu could wipe out half of humanity. Yeah. They've been talking about it for weeks. Uh, what's going on? Coronavirus has killed over 365,000 people worldwide in just five months. But that's nothing compared to what could be coming if humans don't clean up their act when it comes to chickens. In his new book, How to Survive a Pandemic, Dr. Michael Gregor a scientist and physician who once testified for Oprah Winfrey in her meat defamation trial, warns that an apocalyptic virus emanating from overcrowded and unsanitary chicken farms has the potential to wipe out half humanity. And I don't disagree with that. If you look at these poultry farms, even the uh, bovine cattle farms and stuff, it's disgusting. Pig farms, absolutely horrible. Uh, what do they do with all the waste? If you ever get a, an aerial view of a farm, there's literally like a lake, a man-made lake of excrement from the animals that needs to be sorted. It needs to be away from the animals because it'll make them sick. And the animals are locked away, no free range, they're pumped full of antibiotics. They're sick, and this is what you're consuming. All right, well, uh, the bird flu, the original Spanish flu outbreak of 1920, and the H5N1 outbreak in Hong Kong in 1997. The worry is that the virus never stands still, but is always mutating. And that's what they're afraid of now, the monster lurking in the undergrowth, the one that makes epidemiologists shudder. Yeah, anyway, so the Hong Kong outbreak, which originated in a bird market, started with a three-year-old boy in Hong Kong whose sore throat and tummy ache turned into a disease that curdled his blood and killed him within a week from acute respiratory and organ failure. Well, only 18 people contracted the flu, a third of them died. That's terrifying. Not a large sample. During that pandemic, the government killed 100... Sorry, 1.3 million chickens in an attempt to eliminate the virus. It's starting to happen in the U.S. They're starting to call these chickens. They found the H5N1 virus in chickens. I can't remember where. And they just, they're going to kill them all. Uh, so 24 billion chickens on Earth feeding the world. What can be done? Well, he 
He said, we need to change the entire system away from large-scale farms where chickens are fed antibiotics and crammed together, pass diseases from one another. Uh, free range. Let people have their own chickens and stuff like that. Well, a lot of municipalities got away from all that because it's dirty. So let's lock them into a giant facility and uh, then just hide the dirt and consume it and die. Bird flu could be grounded. Anyway, so what they're saying is that uh, if it begins jumping from birds to humans, the fact that there's so many farms and so many chickens, that it'll be unstoppable. And if it is as bad as it was in Hong Kong, then look out. 30% kill rate? Yikes. Anyway, don't worry about it. They're working on a vaccine for all of this. All right. Infographic. Climate. Scientist credibility hurt. Yeah, so what's the deal here? Humanity has only a few years to act before the world may irreversibly plunge into environmental catastrophe of global proportions, climate experts warned in a recent report. Their calls were muffled, however, by dozens of past dramatic predictions that have failed to pan out. Yeah, absolutely. They talked about uh, all kinds of craziness, like the temperature goes up one degree, everything's going to fall apart. Uh, so what kind of things have they claimed in the past? The glaciers are collapsing. 1939. All the glaciers in eastern Greenland are rapidly melting, the Harrisburg Sunday Courier reported. It may, without exaggeration, be said that the glaciers, like those in Norway, face the possibility of a catastrophic collapse. They do, in fact. But uh, how extreme is it? Is They're calling for it in 1939, and it hasn't happened yet, almost 100 years later. Well, the oceans will inundate us, 1947. The possibility of a prodigious rise in the surface of the ocean with resultant widespread inundation arising from an Arctic climate phenomenon was discussed yesterday by Dr. Hans Allman, a noted Swedish geophysicist at the University of California Geophysical Institute. The Arctic change is so serious that I hope an intentional agency can speedily be formed to study the conditions on a global basis. Yeah, and it did, and it has, and nothing has occurred. 1958, ships will sail over the North Pole. Uh, yeah, some scientists have estimated that the polar ice pack is 40% thinner and 12% less in area than it was half a century ago. And no, it wasn't. World famine unavoidable. 1967, it's already too late for the world to avoid a long period of famine, Salt Lake Tribune reported. Uh, Paul Eric's prediction of famines by 1975. Totally incorrect. A new ice age is upon us. We're currently exiting the last one, so are we just immediately entering a new one? I thought there was like hundreds of thousands of years in between these things. Scientists predicts a new ice age by the 21st century. Uh, yeah, by my watch, we're here. Hasn't happened. Expect water and food rationing, 1970. So they're saying by 1980, guess what? We're going to be rationing foods. It never happened. Disastrous new ice age coming, 1971. Didn't happen. We have 10 years to stop the catastrophe. 1972, I was born at 1982, still here. We're going to freeze, 1972. Ice age coming fast. Space satellites show new ice age coming fast. 1974, ice age signs are everywhere, 1974. So it seemed like they really got on this bandwagon in the 70s. 1978, no end in sight to cooling trend. Oh, well, I think there was because we are in a warming trend now. Global warming. The North Pole's melting. Oh, no. Cooling trends over here in 1979. Environmental Holocaust, look out. Mustafa Tolba, executive director of the UN Environmental Program, said that if the world didn't change course, it would face an environmental catastrophe with which witness devastation as complete and irreversible as any nuclear holocaust by the year 2000. Way off there, sir. The Maldives will be gone by 92. Nope, still there. And I'm pretty sure they banned all Jews the other day. Hmm. Uh, entire nations will be underwater, stated in 1989, and that was uh, unable to reverse it by 2000. Children won't know what snow is by the year 2000. In 20 years, no maple syrup in New England. Uh-oh. 2001, they said uh, by now they would be all gone. Nope, still tons of it. By 2020, European cities underwater didn't happen. Greenhouse gases will kill us in 10 years. Didn't happen. After 2012, it's too late. Didn't happen. Ice-free Arctic Ocean as soon as 2010. <clears throat> Wrong. Ice-free Arctic by 2013. Totally incorrect. Arctic will melt away. Is Norway's average temperature this year equals that in 2007? The ice cap in the Arctic will all melt away. Nope. Didn't happen. North Pole. Free of ice. Yeah, and this just continues on and on and on and on. Literally every prediction. Every single prediction 
was incorrect. Not one has happened. Not one. Not a single one. So get your models correct, guys. Climate change is not necessarily what they say it is. Of course, there's things happening. Is it natural? Is it man-made? Is it exacerbated? Is it redundant? Because that's what I think it is. I think humans it may have a small effect, but it's cyclical more than anything. And is used as a tool of fear and control. Because that's what governments do, if you haven't realized it. But governments are always right. You check out that diet, you know, go ahead, get that whack Arnold's. Get those big Mac attacks. You'll be fine. COVID vaccine may have helped fuel rise in XX deaths. Okay, well, first of all, YouTube, if you're out there listening, I'm just reading an article here. I have nothing specific to say about this. Experts call for more research into side effects and possible links to mortality rates. This is from The Telegraph, front page news uh, over there in England. COVID vaccines could be partly to blame for the rise in excess deaths since the pandemic, scientists have suggested. Researchers from the Netherlands analyzed data from 47 Western countries and discovered that there had been more than 3 million excess deaths in 2020, with the trend continuing despite the rollout of vaccines and containment measures. Huh? Really? That's weird. Uh, they said the unprecedented figures raised serious concerns and called on all governments to fully investigate the underlying causes, including possible vaccine harms. Writing in the BMJ Public Health, the authors from Vrije Universiteit Amsterdam said, Although COVID-19 vaccines were provided to guard civilians from suffering morbidity and mortality by the COVID-19 virus, suspected adverse events may have been documented as well. Or no, sorry, have been. Both medical professionals and citizens have reported serious injuries and deaths following vaccination to various official databases in the Western world, quote unquote. They added, during the pandemic, it was emphasized by politicians and the media on a daily basis that every COVID-19 death mattered and every life deserved protection through containment measures and COVID-19 vaccines. In the aftermath of the pandemic, the same moral should apply. The study found that across Europe, the U.S. and Australia, there have been more than 1 million excess deaths in 2020 at the height of the pandemic, but also 1.2 million in 2021 and 800,000 in 2022 after measures were implemented. Researchers said the figure included deaths from COVID-19, but also the indirect effects of the health strategies to address the virus spread and infection. Yeah, of course. Of course. I don't know why it would have been denied in the beginning. It's obvious. They warned that the side effects linked to COVID vaccine had included uh, ischemic stroke, acute coronary syndrome and brain hemorrhage, cardiovascular diseases, coagulation, hemorrhages, gastrointestinal events, and blood clotting. These are all verified within different uh, adverse event uh, registries. And then it goes on to talk about how risky the different ones were. AstraZeneca, for instance, was removed off the market recently. German researchers have pointed out that the onset of excess mortality in early 2021 in the country coincided with the rollout of vaccines, which the teams had warranted further investigation. However, more recent data regarding side effects has not been made available to the public, with countries keeping their own individual databases of harms, which rely on self-reporting by the public and doctors, the experts warned. So that's one way that they're trying to discount it. They're saying, oh, it's all self-reporting, but it's from a doctor. In most cases, the doctor would get the report from the patient, and then he would investigate and he would submit the report. That's as simple as it is. It's not just random people calling up a phone number saying whatever they want and it being recorded as fact. Absolutely not. There's a whole process to it. It shouldn't be discounted. Delays to other treatments. Researchers said that it was likely that the impact of the containment measures restricted healthcare and socioeconomic upheaval during the pandemic had contributed to deaths, although accepted. That was difficult to prove. But it certainly it definitely had an effect, for sure. Gordon Wizard. Chief Medical Officer at Check for Cancer and Visiting Professor of Cancer Surgery at Angelia Rushkin University warned repeatedly that delaying cancer diagnosis would lead to deaths. Of course, if you're not getting medical treatment, especially for something severe like that, it's probably going to be bad. It was predicted early in the lockdown period that limited access to healthcare for non-COVID conditions would lead to delays in the diagnosis and treatment of time-critical conditions such as cancer, cardiac disease, diabetes, and dementia. The world over excess deaths in the conditions. Yeah, so... What they were saying was that, yeah, hospitals, everything was shut down. They were overwhelmed. So a whole bunch of the other things happened. And that 
would have led to more deaths. But there's other things too, such as the medical interventions. So uh, yeah, just go ahead, do your own research. Don't believe everything the government tells you. Okay, like prior to 2019, a lot of people uh, had a lot of distrust for the government. There weren't everybody willing to do whatever the government said until there was a level of fear instilled in them about uh, protecting everybody. And then they pretty much just fell in line and did whatever they said. And guess what? The government's not always right. It's a proven track record that they've been wrong most of the time. Spain, gypsy man who raped and impregnated 12-year-old girls, acquitted after arguing that adult child sex is part of his culture. Unbelievable. So we don't really need to dive too deep into this story to find out that uh, the court system is completely corrupted. And if you could basically say, hey, listen, I'm from another country, and in that country we have sex with kids. And even if they say no, we do it. And then you can uh, just go ahead and get away with it. In the ruling, the court stated that the adult child sexual activity was always consensual and within the framework of a romantic relationship. Bizarrely, it also declared that a 12-year-old victim was close in age and maturity to her abuser, who was 11, uh, well, no, a lot older, actually. Anyway, whatever. You don't really need to get into this. Uh, he was originally sentenced to 37 years in prison, and it was reduced just to 8 years and 9 months. The unnamed man impregnated the girl three times when she was between the ages of 12 and 15. The court concluded that gypsy culture, couple unions occur at very early ages. So he's a gypsy, you know, can't charge the gypsy because they do things differently than us. So hopefully that gets turned over and that's absolutely ridiculous. Raping Roma girls has few legal consequences. Atrocious. Chicago couple brutally assaulted by teens while on date. Pregnant wife loses baby after attack. So Chicago is uh, totally the worst place on earth, apparently. Teen suspects who said, we own the streets as they mercilessly beat husband and his pregnant wife in Chicago neighborhood. So yeah, a bunch of these kids out. We believe uh, in faith and it wasn't meant to be, so we don't know why this happened to us. Okay, uh, she said her and her husband were viciously attacked by the group, which held them down during the assault. The attack was not a robbery, according to the victim. They didn't steal anything. They said, we own the streets. We own the street. You can't walk around. I was wearing, a, like, a nice dress and heels. Like, I was out on a date with my husband, and they dragged my dress on the ground. They said, we own the street. You just can't walk around prancing in your little dress. So, lawlessness. What is going on? Police officers responded to a call about a battery in progress. Uh, Chicago Police Department, 14-year-old male offender struck the 40-year-old male victim in the head. A 17-year-old female offender pulled the female victim's hair. Her age was not provided. Yeah, so there you go. You have a bunch of uh, lawless children running around. Where are their parents? We had some parents get uh, charged when their son shot up a school. Should these parents of the children who are assaulting people get charged? I believe so. All right, and holy schlit, 135 out of 680 hotels in New York City are now shelters for illegal immigrants. Yeah, so there you go. Trying to get a hotel in New York, they're all booked up, or you do find a room and it's just a ton of uh, migrants from South America. Look out, because they're committing crimes like crazy and killing cops. If your kids uh, told you they are trans, here's what you should know, because it is Pride Month, and uh, yeah, they might get bold enough and come out to you once i clued in i said the doctors make a best guess based on your body but only you can know and we love you no matter what yeah i think what you should do uh if your child comes to you like this is assess the school um and what they're indoctrinating them with uh find out what's going on in your kid's life if you're not involved with your kid then literally just sit down with them, talk to them, listen to them. Don't get angry at what they're said. They're obviously clearly very confused and have a bunch of information that they've latched on to. Um, talk to them. Figure out what's going on. Where did they get led down this road? Try and understand why you haven't been there. Implant yourself into your child's life. And uh, try to support them to live a normal, healthy life, mentally and physically. Don't go and affirm this behavior. But in some states, you'll get arrested if you don't. And in Canada as well, they have this thing, like if you were to bring up the Bible to your kid, then they could take your kid away, basically. I don't know if it's passed legislatively yet, but, uh, you know, it's uh, in the guise of conversion therapy. You know, conversion therapy is wrong. You shouldn't take someone who's choosing a lifestyle and put them in a bag and beat them and say, you're reborn again. 
you know what I mean? Or like, you know, lambast them with insults and whatever. If someone chooses to do this as an adult, let them do it. Who cares? But if they're inflicting or uh, implying that this would help children, then that's incorrect. Okay, the child needs help. That's all you need to know. Talk to them, get to know them a lot better than what you do. Quit your job if you have to. Stay home with your kid. Have a life with them. All right, as a transgender person, what brings them joy? This might be interesting to know. Um, Pride Month, CNN wants to hear from you. Share your story. Well, guess what? I'll tell you what brings me joy as a heterosexual person. It's spending time with my family and uh, having them know that they're safe and protected and loved. And that's it. I mean, I think that's what anybody wants. So nothing against transgender people, nothing against the gay, homosexual, lesbian, bi, transgender, two-spirit, whatever. If this is what you choose and you honestly believe that this is life on earth is all about that, identifying with your sexuality, go for it. But don't be putting it in schools. Don't be writing books for kids about it. Don't be having kids, children come in being indoctrinated by this. Because kids believe in the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. And if you show them all this stuff that you believe in and uh, paint a rosy picture, then yeah, guess what? They'll probably be inclined to do it, especially if they're marginalized. It seems like a lot of these people, uh, aut autism seems to play a large factor in transgenderism. Uh, people who are marginalized, they're latching onto this group. It's finally someone that they can uh, associate with. They have no relevancy, otherwise no validity. And then you have this group of people who are on the fringe of society, like with regards to their ideology, guess what? It's kind of like cult behavior. Dr. Jordan Peterson airs Pride Month grievances. Celebration of sexuality is named after Cardinal Sin. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get a couple of quotes from Dr. Jordan Peterson. You should be very careful what you name things, and pride is not a virtue. No, it's, it's a sin. Uh, pretty much all of it is a lie, and it's a dangerous lie, and it's a lie with real monsters hovering on the edges. Pride is a cardinal sin, and there's a reason for that. Pride means something like stubborn refusal to change when evidence of error is accruing, and it's not a good thing. Absolutely correct. Okay, so uh, they said the way that it's mentioned in the way they have adopted is not the way of, of, of sin. He says, fair enough, I suppose to some degree, but that was the name that was chosen, and that's the name that stuck. There's a real tinge of narcissism, sexual narcissism about the whole pride spectacle. Do you people have the right to express their sexuality the way they see fit? To some degree, if it's consensual and among adults, but generally among human beings with any degree of civilized comportment whatsoever, it's pretty damn private affair. It's also the case that identity based on something as narrow as sexual desire, let's say, aren't identities at all their pronouncement of subjection to an instinctual whim yeah you're identifying with desire i talked about this a couple of days ago thank you jordan peterson for backing it up americans are nearly twice as likely to say they would want to back companies facing criticism for supporting people in the lgbt community rather than their critics interesting uh, Peterson has a real problem with the idea of the LGBTQ+, etc. community because he believes that some members are out to destroy others. Absolutely. Just go on Twitter and look it up. There was one the other day stating to say, uh, we want to uh, influence your kids. Your kids will love us and they will become us. Like, this, that's what they're out there saying. A lot of people are saying, if you don't affirm me or if you misgender me, I will stab you. It's very violent, okay? It's not a community, and especially not a community right now, because the trans-pushing, gender-affirming butchers and liars primarily target young people whose most likely outcome of the sexual front is homosexuality. So the transgender-affirming butchers and liars are differently, de differentially destroying the youthful gay community. The Pride movement has torn down a lot of fences, and maybe some of those fences need to go, but all of them didn't need to go, and there's plenty of monsters coming out to play now. Absolutely. That's where we're seeing this butchery in the medical community, abetted by idiot allies and driven by greed yeah they say each patient that's going to transition is about a million dollars in profit over the lifetime of that transition and there's been a countless number of studies coming out from uh, europe even america that uh, kids just simply grow out of this okay just like santa claus the easter bunny they eventually come to terms with what's real and what's not they mature and they decide yeah hey listen i'm so happy i didn't lop and chop all right people Sigma Tiger signing out.